Last time we were together, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about a man named Charles Darwin, didn't we? And what was Charles Darwin's claim to fame? What did he say? What are the words we associate with Darwin? Okay. Who can tell me? How about this? Who can tell me something about Darwin? Just reviewing a bit. Okay. No one? Thank you, Jonathan. Galapagos. Okay. And he traveled to the Galapagos Island. And what did he notice? Just a review. What did he notice about the Galapagos Island? There's different variations of animals from the mainlands of South America. Okay? Whether it be what was the ones he was known for studying? Finches, yes. Whether it be finches, could be Galapagos tortoises, okay? We're going to have a presentation, I told you, from Mr. Hirschfeld, where you can go during IE to get bonus. And that whole presentation, he'll be talking about the Galapagos Islands. Why? Because he's been there, okay? He's been there to study these animals that we're talking about. So, he'll do a presentation during IE sometime, and I'll let you know what the date is, but you'll have the opportunity to earn bonus points by just going there during IE and watching him in his presentation, okay? So, we talked about the Galapagos, Darwin, something called natural selection. What was natural selection, okay? What is natural selection? What do you think? Wendy, if you got it, what is it? Okay. Adaptations to their environment is one of the things that Linda says. Okay. That something in nature had caused those creatures to adapt. Okay. What was the big deal about the finches? Okay, what was the deal about the finches? You know? No? Jamie? Their beaks were different. Why were their beaks different? Okay, why were they different? It was based on what they were eating. Okay, did they need strong beaks to break seeds? Okay, were they eating seeds? Were they eating insects? Were they eating bugs? Okay, so their beaks made a difference because they were adapting on their resources, their food sources. Now, today, we're going to talk evidence of evolution. Okay, what kind of evidence we have that these adaptations are occurring? Well, the very first thing is I'm sure we've heard of fossils, right? I'm sure we've heard of fossils. A fossil helps to give us a record of past species. A record of past species. It can help show similarities and differences between today's organisms <clears throat> and ones that were around many, many millions, perhaps even billions of years ago. Fossils help us to see derived traits, what we call derived traits. They're new traits. <coughs> They're new traits. It can also help us to see ancestral traits. 
the old traits. So it can help us to see the ancestry old traits and how those specific organisms have adapted to get the new traits, the derived traits. And we can use, we can use these fossils to help us to determine ancestry, how certain things are related. <clears throat> With that, it also shows us patterns of evolution, patterns of the changes that are being made. And finally, it can show us intermediate species. <clears throat> Now, let's talk a little bit about some of these fossil records, okay? I don't know. Let me see what I got next. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some fossil records and some changes that have occurred, okay? And I'll have my little drawing here. Let's say that I've got a tree, right? <clears throat> I've got a tree here. The leaves are pretty tall, right? The leaves are up there pretty high. Well, here is the old school giraffe. Isn't that a great picture of a giraffe? Now, what's the problem with my giraffe right there? What do giraffes eat? Any idea? Leaves. Can that giraffe eat those leaves? No. So it's thought that year after year after year that the evolution that has occurred was that the giraffe now has a much longer neck so that he can reach the leaves to eat those. So, do you think that we could find fossils of this giraffe with a short neck compared to this one with the longer neck? Yeah, that's the fossil history here that shows us similarities and differences, okay? Probably the biggest difference, just the longer neck, okay? Do you think these two animals could be related? Absolutely. Sure they could, okay? Now, look at this. There is a fossil of that particular animal right there okay we found this fossil we've recreated this fossil we put it back together all the bones and stuff and we've come up with this animal right there can you think of anything nowadays that looks similar to this animal right here what do you think Anything that looks similar to that animal right there, has wings, walks on two feet, like that. Okay, to me, you know what I look at there and can see? Maybe not so much the head, but the body and stuff. Could be a skinny chicken. Okay, now their coloring's not the same, but a chicken walks on two legs, right? Right? Like that? Okay? So, to me, I looked at that and I said, hey, maybe that is an early ancestor to a chicken. Okay? Two, I mean, other types of birds, I guess it could be. Only thing is, he has a little bit longer neck than the birds we think of, right? Okay? But can you see the similarity? 
Now, what's some more evidence of evolution? Something that we call comparative anatomy. Comparative anatomy. Homologous structures. And folks, I can assure you, people struggle with these a lot. Okay, throughout the years I've seen, we struggle with these. But you know what? These will be on your end of course exam. So it's important to know these. It's important to know what they mean because you will see them again. They'll be there. Homologous structures are structures that are similar, that are inherited from a common ancestor. We will do a lab dealing with these starting tomorrow and running into next week, evidence of evolution, that we'll talk about homologous structures and we'll cut, paste, color, do some of that stuff with these. Now, here's a diagram. You'll see this diagram again. But look at this diagram. Here is your arm. The big bone in your arm is the radius in your upper arm, excuse me, the humerus in your upper arm. In your lower arm, okay, you have two bones in your forearm. The smaller one is the ulna, the larger one is the radius. And in your hands, okay, your fingers are called phalanges, okay? So here are my phalanges. Here are my metacarpals on my hand right here, these green ones here. And here is a carpal, the bone right by my wrist. Have you ever heard of carpal tunnel? Ever heard of that? Okay, that's those carpal bones right there. But can you see these bones? Now let's look. Did you ever think that your arm was like a cat's arm? Did you ever think that? Probably not, would you? Sydney, did you think your arm was like a cat's arm? But look, here's a humerus. Look, here's two bones in the forearm. A radius and an ulna. Look, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. Now let's look at this, a whale. Look at the whale. His flipper has all those bones. Look at the bat. Here we go again. They're all similar structures, okay? Now, obviously, is my arm used the same way that a bat's wing is? I'm not gonna fly anywhere. I'm not jumping off any trees to fly. It's not gonna work. But the bone structure, right? Those are homologous structures, the similarities. Vestigial structures. Vestigial structures are the other, the second type. A vestigial structure is a reduced form of functional structures in other organisms. Now, when we talk vestigial structures, right here, See this guy right here? What is that? That little protrusion coming off of the large intestine. Here's the large intestine. Here's the small intestine. Right off here is the appendix. What do you know about appendix? What do you know about appendix? When do we hear about appendix nowadays? If what? If it's causing a problem, if it becomes inflamed, they got to take it out. Because if it bursts, that's bad news. You get infection in your gut. They're not real sure what it does anymore. They're not sure why we have it. It's there, but we're not real sure why, because it has reduced function, if any. Okay? What else? Look at that, the dodo, the dodo bird. This little thing right here you can't see very good is a wing. But guess what? 
He can't fly. Dodo birds can't fly, but they have wings. Okay? You might not think this, but in this skeleton of this whale, you know what this is right here? A pelvis and hind legs. So this whale has back legs that are no longer protruding out of its body anymore. They're just bones. So at one time, at one time, they thought, think that an ancestor of this whale was a land animal. At one time, they think an ancestor was a land animal. Some more analogous structures. Analogous structures. They are structures that are used for the same purpose, but different morphology. Different morphology. Now, we talked about the bird, or excuse me, the bat swing and you're in my arm, right? They were similar. Are they used for the same things? My arm's not used for flying, is it? <clears throat> and my arm's not used for flying. Well, what we're talking here is structures that are used for the same thing. Something, for instance, used for flying, but are different in how they're put together. Think about this. We know a bat flies, right? So a bat has wings. Are the wings of that bat used the same way that the wings of the duck is? Are they used the same way? What are they for? To fly, right? So, they have the same purpose, to fly. Is their morphology the same? Have you ever seen the wing of a bat? It's like a skinnish-like thing, isn't it? Is that the same way a duck's wing is? No, they're feathers, right? So, here I've got a bat. Here I've got a bird. Analogous structures. They're used for the same thing. They're used for flying. However, are they built the same way? No. Let me add another one here. Okay? Another one. How about a bumblebee? Do bumblebee's wings look anything like these? No. They're used to fly, though, right? Okay, so that would be another analogous structure. What is some more evidence of evolution? Comparative embryology. Comparative embryology. Well, what is comparative embryology? They show common structures that are in the embryonic stages. Okay? Common structures that are in the embryonic stages. If you look, don't these all right here in the second and third one look kind of the same? Right there and right here. You know, and there's even some similar right here, right? But look how they turn out at the end. Are they anything like each other? No. But in certain stages when they're in the embryos, like each other? Absolutely. Comparative embryology. Comparative biochemistry. Common ancestry shown by common metabolic compounds. Common ancestry shown by common metabolic compounds. I'm sure you've heard of some of these things. Amino acids, proteins, DNA, RNA. Anybody ever heard of those? I hope so. We just talked about them. Now, let me ask you this, okay? When I show you this diagram up here, 
Look, these are all sequences of amino acids and hemoglobins. Okay, look at the horse right here. Who do you think the horse is most like if you just read the species? Do you think the horse is more like a human, a gorilla, a chimpanzee, or a zebra? We would guess a horse and a zebra, right? Well, look at the amino acid sequences, okay? They're almost the same, three out of the four, aren't they? Three out of the four are the same. Look at the gorilla and the chimpanzee. The gorilla and the chimpanzee. Three out of the four are the same, aren't they? Does that make sense? Right there. Comparative biochemistry. Okay. How about geographic distribution? Something that we call biogeography. Animals found in closer locations have closer common ancestors. This is the English rabbit right here. Is an English rabbit and a Mara right there. Look at those hind legs. Doesn't that look like the hind leg of a rabbit? Okay. Can you see some similarities there? Geographic distribution. Now, what leads to some of this? Migrations, plate tectonics, climate changes can affect the biogeography. Okay, right here is some biogeography. What are the difference of all these butterflies in South America? What's the difference between them? The patterns on their wings, right? So there's got to be some reason why these have adapted from this. And can you see that these are closer together? And they all look fairly the same? Now let's go to the other side of the the continent here, the other side of South America. Look at that. Are these butterflies different than on, you know, the east side and west side? Absolutely. Are these west siders here somewhat similar to each other? Yeah, they're all orange, right? Adaptation. We've talked about Adaptation. Do we have, are we done here? Is this adaptation? Must be the next th things in notes. Okay. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you.